Good evening, I'm Richard Rallo, in tonight for Jose Cardenas. Learn about a program that is helping students stay in school, teach them how to get a job, and how to enroll in college. And a superfood with health benefits makes its way into Arizona. Those stories coming up next on Horizonte. Funding for Horizonte is made possible by contributions by the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you for joining us tonight. Jobs for Arizona's graduates, known as JAG, helps young people stay in school and get the personal leadership, academics, and vocational skills they need to be successful after graduation. We will talk to the president of JAG in a moment, but first let's listen to what some students have to say about the organization. influence for students, introducing them to things that they never thought of before, showing them how to communicate, giving them opportunities that they may not have realized were available to them. And JAG's helped me by allowing me to, to again, be a positive influence for students and kind of achieve my dream because growing up I didn't really have a lot of teachers that were there and, and truly cared outside of the classroom. And uh, my dream was always to be, that, to be that person for students and JAG's allowed me to fulfill that. So instead of thinking of Journeys Don't Stop Believing as the last scene of The Sopranos, we can think about it with JAG. Joining me to talk more about this organization is Graciela Garcia. Can Candia. You have to help me with your name. Graciela Garcia. Garcia Candia. Candia. No Candia. accent over the I. Ah, Candia. Right. We should have worked this out in the green room before. President of Jobs for Arizona's Graduates, thanks for joining us this evening. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. How long has this program been around? We have been in the state of Arizona for over 33 years. We've served over 33,000 young people uh, since our inception, and we are currently serving 1,300 young people in 28 schools. 33 years, uh, how big was it when it started? What was the original concept when it started? The original concept started in 1980, and it was a school-to-career transition program. It was statewide, and it was in partnership with school districts, helping identify young people who uh, we wanted to graduate and make sure that they were not going to be unemployed or underemployed after graduation. Since then, we have moved to uh, looking at different ways to help the young people, not only through employment, but also connecting them to post-secondary opportunities. We found out that these young people strive for that, and that's uh, they believe that they can do it now. Back in 1980, was it just one school, a community? What it, did was, you look for? it was statewide. It yeah, was, right it, away, was it, was it was statewide right away. We're part of a national organization called Jobs for America's Graduates. And it started actually in 1979 in the state of Delaware as an answer to Governor uh, Pete DuPont, uh, DuPont, excuse me, who uh, wanted to find a program that was going to answer the unemployment and underemployment of his youth exiting high schools. So the pilot uh, went through a year, and Carolyn Warner, state superintendent at the time, uh, was part of the debrief of the program and decided that this was a program for Arizona. So we were state, uh, it was a statewide program in 1980. Uh, 
I believe it was last week or the week before, uh, NBC News had Education Nation. There was a yes. student panel at the Herberger yes. Theater, and student after student kept mentioning this program, and that's what got our producers to think, wow, and this would be something to, to discuss. I don't know how many people who haven't been affected by the program or have used the program know about it. We, at some point, we thought it was the best kept secret in Arizona, and it wasn't by design. It was just, it, it just happened. But now that our young people are out there in the community and they're giving back, they talk about JAG. They come to our, uh, our career development conference. They come back to our, our classrooms and they talk about their success. So they're out there. You'll be surprised some of our uh, alumni, who they are and what they're doing now. So uh, we're very excited for them and we, we, we thank the, the school partnerships because uh, they allowed us to go into the schools and provide the services. How do you pick what schools or, or what schools do you look for? Uh, we, um, the school districts identify themselves. They, they let us know if, if our program meets their goal, if, they're, if we're going to align to a need that they have. So if they have uh, some, uh, a dropout um, issue, if they uh, want their students to be a little bit more uh, prepared when they go into the workforce, not that they don't have programs like that, but JAG really uh, emphasizes and focuses on the young people that have not really looked into further education, maybe not even graduating from high school. It's just not been in their plan because of a lot of personal barriers, academic barriers that they have to their success. So the schools come to you. The they self, they self-identify. They self-identify, and we, and because they've heard of our program, will will call us and say, you know, how can we, how can we provide this program in our schools? And then you look for a certain type of student, right? Yes, we're looking for students who are the ones that are not engaged and have not typically joined other clubs or activities. Uh, these are the underrepresented students. These are the struggling students, the students that, like I said, really hadn't thought about even graduating from high school because they just had so many barriers to their success. How, so how do you engage a student that isn't engaged? Do you go that's find the them? Magic. That's the magic. There is an advisory committee that's formed at their campuses and it's um, those advisory committees are the ones that help us identify the students that most need and want the services that JAG provides. They have to be a willing participant. They have to say yes I want to be part of this and their parents and the students sign a commitment form that says that they're going to enroll in the program and a, and a year after graduation they're still going to receive services because we do a full year of follow-up uh, proactive services to make sure that they're enrolled in school or they're employed in a in meaningful job. But you must have some students then who come to you in a do this program or else type of situation. Like, I mean, they've, they've come through teachers or counselors who are letting them know you're in trouble. There are some things that need to yes, get fixed. Yes, but you know, you would be surprised because once they get in there, they, they start connecting with that teacher. They really develop a trust. They become a family. And uh, the students participate in a uh, student-led organization that's co-curricular, so it's part of their, their daily uh, classroom. Uh, through the Career Association, they're, they're able to then participate in, in community service projects. They're giving back to the community. They start trusting each other. They start learning how to be a team. They, they learn about different opportunities to, to help their, their own schools and even sometimes their own community. So that's what really engages the students, and that's what keeps them coming to school. So now all the teachers have their opportunity to teach our students. Career Association, you have them start thinking about what they want to do for a living? or Absolutely, action? absolutely. Part of the curriculum is they do an intensive career research to make sure that they know what they're passionate about, what they're good at, uh, what they want to do, what do they want to contribute into their community. We often ask them, what are your passion, what's your vocation, what's going to get you excited, what do you want to start, what do you want to be part of? And that's how we get the students to focus on what career path they want to uh, they want to investigate or research. And it's done through their class. So they bring in guest speakers, they go on field trips, and it's all done in the, in the classroom along with the rest of their 39 classmates. And so maybe it's not even that they have to pick the career they'll do, but they pick a career, they, pick, they, they, pick, they pick a goal. They pick a goal and then they go out and they do a job observation day or they, uh, they do a summer internship program and that gets them to the idea of, oh my goodness, this is really what I want to do or oh no, this is not what, what I really had in mind. A couple of years ago, we, uh, we had a student who wanted to be a uh, medical doctor 
And so she was able to, we, we found her a job in, in, the, in the medical field. And after the summer, she completed the program over the summer and com completed her job. She came back the next year and said, you know, ah, this is not for me. I do not want to be in the medical field. So she's now at the U of A, ready to graduate, and she is going to be a lawyer. So it just it goes to show you that they have to do the research to make sure that this is the right career path. And we tell them that throughout their life, they're going to change their career, and that's okay. And, and she's at the U of A, which we'll, U we'll, of a. we'll overlook being on the campus of Arizona yes. State. But uh, you allow them to make some mistakes, too. Absolutely, um, because I myself am a wildcat. Oh, well, well, let's, let's overlook that for the next <laughs> few minutes. How, does, how do you guys get funding? Uh, how does this program We have funding. 48% uh, of our uh, budget comes through corporate support. The, uh, the community, it's a true, JAG is a true demonstration of bringing leaders from the community and business, education, and government together to solve the, the growing issues of our, uh, of our youth. And they know that funding is important, so that corporate sponsorship is extremely important for us. We are a uh, Valley of uh, the Sun United Way uh, value partner for many, many years. And we received uh, some funding from the governor's uh, program in, uh, for college access, a challenge grant to provide some additional transition programs for college, for, for the college uh, track for the young people. And then do you need, uh, I'm just looking, there's probably people in the community who might want to help. Do you look for advisors? Do you need people to come in and speak at schools? What kind of things do Absolutely. you look for volunteers? Absolutely. If they go onto our website, they can see the multitude of opportunities to volunteer and participate. Um, coming into the classroom and talking about their story, talking about how they went to school, talking about what it was like when they were choosing their career. All of those are important opportunities for, for our students to hear from, from volunteers. If they want to make a donation, absolutely, we will accept it. Um, but important is that they come in and they meet our students, that they visit with them and they talk to them and give them continue to inspire them and give them hope because that's what our students need. They need to be engaged in the community and they, they need to show that they are going to be successful community, contributing community members. Let's hear those numbers again. How many students are being helped now and how many have been helped through the life of the program? Currently, 1,300 students in 28 schools and through the entire process, over 33,000 young people. And I imagine you might see, especially from those from the 80s and 90s, a ripple effect where you see brothers and sisters or... We do. And surprisingly, we would love for those students to have said to their brothers and sisters, this is the process, here's what I did, so that you don't become one of those struggling students, but this becomes a family and what they tell us is we want them to go through the program because there's so many opportunities that come with being part of our, our, our program that they want their brothers and sisters and their, their cousins to participate and experience that wonderful opportunity that they had. So um, it's a blessing. Yeah, jobs for Arizona's graduates. Graciela, thanks for coming to share this quiet success story uh, with our viewers. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. To find out more information about what's on Horizonte, go to azpbs.org and click on the Horizonte tab at the top of the screen. There you can access many features to become a more informed Horizonte viewer. Watch interviews by clicking on the video button or by scrolling down to the bottom of the page for the most recent segments. Learn about more specific topics like arts and culture and immigration. You can also find out what's on Horizonte for the upcoming week. If you would like an RSS feed, a podcast, or you want to buy a video, that's all on our website too. Other features include our collection of website links and a special page for educators. While you're there, show your support for Horizonte with just one click. Discover all that's on Horizonte. Visit azpbs.org, Horizonte, today. <laughs> Arizona is the first state to welcome America's newest superfruit, the ancient Incan peachberry. Joining me to talk about this fruit is Manuel Villacorta, a registered dietitian and nutrition expert and spokesperson for the Peachberry Company, uh, located here in Phoenix. Thanks for coming to join us. Thanks for bringing some Petri berries. Yeah, thank you for having me, yes. Uh, well, let's start with what this fruit is mm -hmm. and where it was first discovered. And Sure. Uh, so the fruit comes from the Andes of Peru, and um, it's been uh, with us for hundreds of years. And uh, the Incas used to eat these as uh, energy, uh, you, uh, you know, source. 
and uh, it is and what we know now is the amazing amazing health benefits that actually the berry can provide. Well, and you're an import from Peru yourself, right? Yeah, I am actually from Peru, and I just traveled to Peru and went and talked to the locals and saw how the berry was growing in the Andes. It's fascinating. It just grows in the wild, and people walk around, pick the fruit, and eat it as they go. Was this part of Peru's diet when you were growing up there as a, as a kid? We ate some. Uh, it's one of those uh, secrets even for South America as well, and it's just been discovered, and that's why we're promoting it now because of the health benefits that they provide, yeah. So you're here on behalf of a Phoenix company that, that is marketing this. Mm -hmm. uh, how did a Phoenix company find out about this <laughs> and get on board? Yeah, Michael Popescu, the general manager of the Pichiberry company, actually did his thesis on the berry when he was at the University of Arizona and now made it a reality. And here I am now talking about the berry. So what are the benefits uh, that I guess probably heretofore we're not even known by people yeah, in Peru well, who eat them. We know now there have been doing tons of research on the berry, and uh, one of the unique properties is the anti-inflammatory effect and anti-cancer effect, and that comes from the withanaloids, which is a phytochemical present in the berry. And you know, there's there are many phytochemicals from other berries, and this is a particular phytochemical the pituberry has, which is called the withanaloids. And uh, they're known to be anti-inflammatory. And uh, they've done research where they show uh, stop cancer uh, tumors growth completely out of um, by the with amyloids. When you say stuff like stops cancers growth, stops tumors growth, anti-cancer, mm -hmm. uh, that sounds incredible and also sounds like something that needs to really be researched exactly. before we make that kind and of claim. Exactly, and it has been, it's uh, University of Arizona, there's research that we're actually in the process right now that are looking into that to, uh, you know, uh, claim that. And uh, but so far, the research we have now is very promising on, on the anti-cancer effects. Okay, so uh, it's not something, I mean, the FDA hasn't signed off on it to say no, it's anti-cancer. No, no, Okay, no. so it, can it be I don't know what the legal stuff is. Can you yeah. claim it being anti-cancer without them? Because of the withanaloids, the studies that are done with in the phytochemical, the withanaloids, so yes, because the withanaloids have been proven to be anti-cancer. And, and they are naturally occurring? Occurring in the, in the, in the are, are they uh, in other foods, or is it a certain concentration that's in this fruit? There are some other foods like broccoli that has uh, with uh, these sort of anti-cancer effects as well. And um, so the uh, physalis is the group of the, you know, the name of the fruit that has been studied for with amyloids. Now, uh, outside of anti-inflammatory or mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the claim of stopping tumors, are there benefits just that we get from other fruits that are enhanced here? Well, uh, the fruit also uh, has little seeds inside that those seeds have little fat and that fat it has stanols and stanols now have been proven to lower LDL cholesterol. So the fruit also carries that, which is then we becomes heart healthy. Uh, the glycemic index of the fruit is actually 25, which is a low glycemic index. And there are some studies now that actually show us that lowers glucose levels, so it is a diabetic-friendly fruit. It's a fruit that also can be helpful for weight management. It's a, it's, it gets you a little sweet without being something that... Without spiking, spiking your sugar. exactly, yes. Uh, how can it be eaten or enjoyed? What are your recommendations on as far as using it, eating it raw? Well, uh, that's another wonderful thing about this fruit that it's versatile and it's tart and sweet and it can be used in many different ways. I have, I mean, you can use it as is like any other berry, but I have made uh, peach berry bread and muffins, uh, frozen yogurt, marmalades, I mean, you name it. It goes from bakings to salads and entries, peach berry reduction sauces. It's quite nice. We heard that you brought a muffin. Some of the crew won't let <laughs> yeah. you leave the studio without trying yes. it. A muffin. Uh, the company that's selling them, how are they getting it to market? Are they going to be in the raw form, in a concentrate, in a yeah, drink? Yeah, so we're starting with the actual fruit. Uh, we have already peach berry infusion juice, 
We add this juice mostly is made out of pitchu berry as the ma main ingredient and you can find that now in Whole Foods and mark uh, farmers markets in Arizona. And uh, then we'll go into dry fruit and puree, etc. Yes. Oh, okay, but right now it's going to be sold fruit in, in this form. And juice, the infusion juice, pitchu berry. Mm -hmm. And uh, can the juice be used in some of the recipes you talked about? In some of the yes, I have made popsicles out of the juice. I have made uh, shakes with the peach berry and other berries as well. It's quite delicious, actually. And it, also, the juice is low glycemic because ma the main ingredient in the juice is peach berries. And something else that the juice has, the peach berry has, is protein as well. And uh, and talk about also the uh, amount of vitamins. And we have to talk about the nutritional value too as well. Um, three ounces of the fruit, which is only a half a cup of the fruit, it has, uh, you can get 39% of your vitamin D and uh, good sources of vitamin A, vitamin E, and vitamin C. Uh, also iron, so uh, it's, it's great for children, growing children, because you're now talking about iron and vitamin C and fighting anemia. So it's one of those super fruits. Right, and I think every so often we hear about, so I think pomegranates were big a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and every so often we hear about these. Uh, what is it about these certain fruits that maybe haven't gained favor before and what makes them, what makes us discover these fruits? Well, the power of health benefits, I think, but what's gonna be the best out of the fruits is the taste. The taste is quite delicious. And uh, you know, we have given it to, to children. I've tasted on children and they love it. They love unwrapping the fruit and it's fabulous for children. I mean, and uh, they've done market research and 95% of the, you know, people that try the berry actually like the berry. And I guess that's the, I mean, one of the, being a dietitian, I'm sure you, mm -hmm. you hear people wanting sort of that magic pill. I want to be healthy, so uh, is there a banana diet, a pomegranate <laughs> diet, a peachy berry diet? Um, yes. How would you incorporate these into sort of a healthy lifestyle? That's I mean, exactly because these aren't a magic bullet. I'm guessing no, is and and we're not saying that either because as I always say, there's not one fruit or chemical that will save you is your entire balanced diet, and this could be incorporated as a fruit option in your diet, among other berries as well. Because you know we know color provide health benefits. You want to vary in color. You want to vary in phytochemicals. That way you get the entire picture of the health benefits. So, and it's so if I have these with nachos and beer, you're saying that, that <laughs> it may buffer the problems. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I mean there's with uh, we were talking be before the show. There was a New York Times article that ran Sunday that talked mm -hmm. about uh, Latino immigrants, the second generation, their children actually live. Shorter, shorter lives. Mm -hmm. What is it about the American diet, do you think, that, that, that causes us not to eat so much? Fruit well, vegetables? I can tell you my own experience. When I moved to the United States, I gained 30 pounds. And, uh, you know, and I think it's because I stopped doing what I was doing growing up, eating home-cooked meals, sitting down around the family and eating whole foods. So I started eating fast foods, uh, wrap foods, packaged foods. Uh, not really eating from home, depending a lot of restaurant foods. So uh, normally fruits and vegetables go off the window when you're eating out. So, uh, you know, by learning to cook and eating more at home, now I'm incorporating more fruits and vegetables as well. The salt consumption goes down, the fat consumption goes down. So, you know, all of a sudden I lost the 30 pounds within two years. And ever since I have gained it back because now I am in charge of what I'm eating. Is is diet uh, as important as exercise, or more important than exercise? <laughs> That's as far a good as question. I always say your diet is eighty percent, your exercise is twenty percent. Uh, they go hand in hand, though, you know. And uh, but nutrition is key. And a lot of times, people spend a lot of time exercising, not paying attention to what they're eating. And you know, yeah, you may be fit, but you're not getting the nutrients that you really need for health. Culturally, is there something about the dinner table that helps us uh, control or, or watch what we eat? Is there something about eating together or pausing to eat at a... Well, at a I mean, you take time to eat, you have conversations, you are actually experiencing the meal time, you know, there's no stress in eating, standing up and eating. So there are studies now that show us that if you sit down and eat, actually, you can assimilate the nutrients better, you digest better, your brain knows that you have eaten, so you're not hungry again in an hour. 
you know, and uh, so there's this whole mindfulness of eating is key as well. And some, I guess you think about your food, you, you take some time to look at, savor. Yeah, and I talk about mindfulness of eating when you're peeling the fruit. You're taking time to eat it, you know, and then you taste it and you savor it and, and uh, it's great. Yeah, and then the, the, you get the idea that fruits, something is what we're supposed to eat, not something. Mm -hmm. This is packaged naturally, not packaged. Packaged really. naturally, yes, yeah, a gift of nature. <laughs> and I guess if we get kids eating this or get more adults eating, oh, there, there's the close-up of yeah. the peachy berry, uh, it might get us to just eat more fruit in general because they're kind of all superfruits in a way, right? Well, yeah, and they're sitting there. They're available to grab and eat. You know, you don't have to cut it. You don't have to do anything, and it's a great snack. Well, instead of the fruit roll-up, you actually have a exactly. bowl of apples or oranges or peachy berries or pomegranates. And there you have it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, uh, and I think you'll probably be uh, promoting these more often. We'll mm -hmm. see you again. Thanks for joining yes, us thank this you. evening on mm -hmm. Health Horizonte. That's our show. Thanks for all of us. I'm going to have some fruit. Good night. Funding for Horizonte is made possible by contributions by the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station.